Well, it looks like Starfield will finally be getting DLSS support officially, not requiring a mod, and they've also confirmed FSR 3 support incoming, although that will be in a future update, uh, even more future than the future update that will be coming with the DLSS support. That would, looks like that one will also get HDR controls. Uh, this will be in a Steam beta update next week. So, uh, it looks like it's uh, good that uh, Bethesda is finally moving forward with uh, these things that people have been requesting since launch. It does seem to be taking a while to get them, and since it's taken this long to get a DLSS support, which, you know, modders had out day one, I understand that game devs need to, you know, play test everything and whatnot, but anyway, it seems like it's taken a while. I'm not quite sure how long it'll take then for us to get FSR 3 support, but at least it is confirmed. Now, we got tons more news to talk about today, but first, now let me show you something really cool from today's sponsor, Power Color, with their Red Devil GPUs with their swappable devil skin backplates. It's so cool not have to be locked into just one design. You can choose the one that fits best for you, easily swappable with magnets. We've got the uh, intrusive devil skin, which is the kind of the simpler, sleeker looking one, and we've got the mesh design called the generative devil skin. These are all really cool. They just attach on with magnets. Excellent choice for a high-end GPU. Check the link in the today's description. Now, Intel keeps plugging away on their GPU drivers, and this is really good news because uh, it'd be, uh, you know, by the time they get their next generation out, if they had a lot of the, the software support issues ironed out that, uh, you know, they had problems with when they got the, the ARC cards out initially, we could potentially see much stronger reviews from day one. And Intel has just been continually delivering these updates uh, and, and shoring up their back catalog of all these, you know, you know, games that you know need specific driver optimization, and they're kind of late to the party on that, and there's nothing you can do other than just kind of get in there and start doing it. Uh, we're seeing headlines of up to 750% performance increase. Now, let's be careful if you dig into their actual uh, driver notes. That is true in Halo the Master Chief Collection specifically uh, at 1080p with enhanced settings. Now, uh, my guess is, well, I haven't tested this myself, it's probably one of those cases of it's just going from being a broken game to a not broken game. Uh, and the average uplift in, in most of these games is significantly smaller, although not insignificant. Uh, you know, 10% improvement is nice. 6% improvement is nice. Some of them, you know, Guild Wars 2, 53% improvement. Sniper Elite 3, 37% improvement. Yakuza 0, 154%. Like, there's a lot of uh, noticeable performance improvements here. Not that I've tested them myself to confirm, but in general, when Intel has made these claims with their driver updates, there is something to it. It's not nonsense, and they're just continually plugging away at this, and that's what we want to see from them. Now, how about some NVIDIA news. Uh, we're uh, continuing to get more 40 series super uh, uh, update, refresh, whatever you want to call it, variants uh, in the news. This time we're talking about their power consumption targets. Now, this leak is uh, coming from copite 7 Kimmy, who if you've monitored GPU uh, leaks for a while is one of the most well-known and most quoted uh, GPU leakers. Doesn't mean everything that uh, he says comes to pass, but a lot of times that could be the case that things are getting bounced around behind the scenes at NVIDIA, and you know, what they're thinking about one day might not end up being what they end up deciding on and ends up shipping to the market. So, uh, this is a reply to a previous tweet I have already uh, talked about. Um, but the reply now is they will have the same power consumption than non-super models. So basically they're not shifting their power consumption targets. Uh, now this WCCF Tech article does, I think, have a summary of uh, a quick, quick recap of the actual specs leaks that I've reported on previously. So the 4080 Super variant is uh, being reported as a 5% core count increase versus the non-super variant which you know isn't mind-blowing. Uh, the 4070 Ti Super versus the 4070 Ti would be a 10% increase in core count. And again, core count isn't always a direct uh, indicator of the exact performance uplift that can be uh, affected by a variety of other things as well. Uh, but the 4070 Super versus the 4070 Non-Super is actually rumored at a 22% increase, which is much more significant. Now, whether any of these actually end up coming to market, and if so, do they come to market in these variants? 
all remains a question mark. And the biggest question mark would be the pricing. If they come in at the same pricing as their non-super counterparts, uh, you know, that would be uh, one thing if they just slot in above them and don't replace them in the market or don't push them down. That's another thing. Um, now, the uh, when will we be getting these if we get them at all? The videocards.com uh, article on this topic uh, does have a quote where they said that they asked board partners. So the videocards.com article, uh, you know, the author here uh, has contact with board partners and uh, they're saying they do not anticipate any significant announcement this year. So would we see it by the end of 2023? Sounds like probably not. Otherwise, board partners would probably be aware of that. Um, so they're saying uh, that you would probably expect no earlier than next year. Uh, now, uh, what they do mention here, which I think is important, is uh, so what, what, what is the big deal with these, these power consumption numbers that we're now getting in this latest rumor? So for the GPU cooler manufacturers, the board partners, the main things that they would need to know is would these be pin compatible with the previous variants and what is their power consumption limits for cooling? Uh, because I think that would give them what they would need uh, in order to kind of move forward with those, um, uh, you, know, you know, cooler model designs and, and if it's compatible with, with uh, models they would already have out, that kind of thing. Now, in AMD GPU news, we are seeing Sapphire board partner unveiling an, a Radeon RX 6750 GRE 12 gigabyte Aurora OC edition, and they're claiming up to 30% faster than RTX 4060 at a similar price. Now, I've already reported on the 6750 GRE, and there's two variants of it, a 10 gigabyte version and a 12 gigabyte version, and I don't love that they're both called the 6750 GRE. And when I've reported on their specs, these are basically the same thing. The 12 gigabyte version specs wise looks almost identical to a 6700 XT, not the 6750 XT. And the 10 gigabyte version looks basically the same thing as a 6700 non XT 10 gigabyte card that we already had. The main interesting thing about these was that their price point uh, was officially lower at uh, uh, $289. Now with the GRE models of cards though, generally end up being a China exclusive card, at least in the DIY market, and maybe coming into pre-built systems more globally. However, uh, and I'll, I will show you guys the card. It does it does uh, look nice and all of that. Now, what's uh, more interesting though is we're starting to see reports of the uh, of a different GRE model, the 7900 GRE, starting to see DIY availability in Europe. So if those start to come more worldwide, then maybe there is a potential of eventually seeing the 6750 GRE models coming more available worldwide. And again, if the pricing is right, that's what could be interesting here. Because again, if this is basically a 6700 XT 12 gigabyte card, but at $289, that's pretty interesting considering the uh, 6700 XT is usually available closer to $320 in the United States with occasional sales that I've seen down to 299. Uh, so it would, um, you know, be a good price to performance competitor there. And with 12 gigabytes versus the, uh, you know, price, uh, if it does get priced down lower to the 4060, uh, which uh, it launched at 300, but we have seen discounts available on that. So if it was more of a direct competitor again on pricing, that does at least sound pretty interesting to me. Now, speaking of 4060 models, how about a 4060 Ti, but with an M.2 expansion slot? We had seen these rumored and uh, kind of leaked uh, uh, early pictures of it, all of that for a long time now, but now it looks like these have actually launched. Now, it's important to note that this SSD is not, at, it's not acting as like, a, a, a part of the card really. Like it's not adding in, uh, you know, more memory to the GPU or anything like that. It's just an interesting design in the sense that it gives you an additional M.2 slot for your PC to use, but it comes in through the GPU. I think this is interesting use of the eight, uh, whoa, I just like completely left the screen there. Oh, hi guys, I'm back. Anyway, the 4060 Ti models um, have been notable in the fact that they only actually use eight of the 16 PCIe lanes that, are, that, that would be available on the, on the full slot. So this M.2 uh, NVMe SSD drive is going to be using the, uh, the wasted potential on those lanes. So if you had a motherboard where all your M.2 slots are full, 
and you bought this GPU, you would then get access to another M.2 slot. Uh, with uh, SSD prices as low as they are now, I, this is a great time to add in more storage, and this gives you another slot to do that. Uh, the main thing that you'd want to check for value-wise is what is the price of this card uh, versus a normal 4060 Ti that didn't have this feature versus um, other ways of expanding your M.2 slot uh, availability if there's uh, you know other ways to add that into your, your motherboard, that kind of thing. But I certainly like seeing innovation on GPUs giving us something else uh, to take a look at this model in particular. So a uh, pretty interesting update there. Um, a lot of it'll come down to how much more does that cost versus the normal one. Now, uh, we're also seeing Power Color unveiling a Radeon RX 7800 XT Hellhound Spectral GPU with white PCB and white cooler. Um, so if you're into a white PC build, this gives uh, another option there available for you. In other GPU cooler model news, we're seeing Colorful launching an RTX 4060i 16 gigabyte iGame Ultra Fog Hill of Five Elements Special Edition. Uh, with some uh, cool uh, kinds of unique designs on it and all of that. Uh, now, let's get to some CPU-related news. AMD's Zen 4C. So, we already have Zen 4. What is the C? What's going on with all of this? So there are Zen 4 cores, and now there are going to be Zen 4C cores, which are smaller. Uh, so because they, uh, they have 35% less area, this can uh, have more density and power efficiency uh, with some uh, trade-offs, I think, like to the L2 cache and things like that. This is a technical specs data sheet comparison uh, between Zen 4 and Zen 4C. Uh, if you wanted to get into the details, and uh, this is AMD marketing slides to be clear here, uh, what, what we're actually looking at here. Uh, but they're showing off, you know, their um, uh, their version of this versus Intel's version, right? Because it's kind of the idea where uh, Intel has their P cores and E cores, their performance cores and their efficiency cores. However, with uh, Intel's version, the, uh, you know, AMD is claiming like uh, that they have reduced gaming performance. You might need to disable efficiency cores uh, for all of that. But they're saying that they're claiming that all their cores can improve gaming performance and you would not need the OS to, you know, task schedule uh, for gaming versus not gaming. Uh, they're claiming, uh, again, so that you wouldn't need the OS uh, scheduler doing quite as much. Uh, their efficient, their, their, their C cores uh, should su still support um, uh, multi-threading, which uh, Intel's efficiency cores don't. They're saying all their cores have the same IPC and all of them run the same uh, instruction set. Uh, so they're, you know, those are their claimed advantages versus Intel's E cores. Again, this is an AMD marketing slide. So, um, uh, of, of course, uh, they're going to make of it what they will. Now, uh, they do have some performance slides. Now, so basically what they're getting at here is if you look at Zen 4 versus Zen 4C, which one's the better use in, in a multi-threaded task, uh, the orange line here uh, is using uh, six AMD Zen 4 cores. The red line is using two Zen 4 cores and four Zen 4C cores. And you can see that when we're down at 10 watts, uh, the uh, efficient cores are producing a better output at that power consumption level, uh, but that um, uh, eventually the orange bar of the normal cores does surpass the multi-threading performance uh, of the C cores past a certain power budget level, right? So in basically in ultra low powered situations, this could be a more efficient design for those types of devices. Uh, and that's the uh, the main um, benefit that you would be uh, looking for here. That's where the main uh, you know optimization comes from. These are pretty interesting. Um, again, I, th I think that's pretty much uh, what we're looking at here. Uh, overall, I think one of the other interesting things to note is that it means that the uh, the GPU that will be included. So so yeah, what products are these coming in? Uh, so it'll be the 7545U and 7540U. Um, where we have a six core 12 thread variant and a four core eight thread variant, um, you know, with different numbers of the, the cores available here. Uh, but then also these will only be coming with Radeon 740M GPUs, which has four compute units. 
Uh, whereas their their previous APUs here came with um, higher co core count variants on the GPUs. Uh, still pretty interesting. Um, I, I would be interested how one of these would perform in a you know Steam Deck style uh, you know ha handheld gaming PC device, because we've seen the Steam Deck at low power targets like 15 watts and below actually sometimes outperforming competitors like the ROG Ally, which have the, uh, you know, basically a 780M equivalent type GPU. Um, uh, at those lower power budgets, uh, sometimes the Steam Deck has actually been more efficient and, and offered better performance. So I'll, I'm curious if, while we do have lower uh, GPU core counts here, if the increased efficiency on the CPUs there might be interesting in that style of device, but we'll have to uh, wait and see. Uh, what happens. Now in Intel CPU news, one of the big things that was missed with their 14th gen launch, or at least it wasn't completely missed, but wasn't talked about or tested a whole lot in the coverage that I saw, was Intel's claim of their new APO feature, uh, which would optimize, uh, uh, somehow software optimize the, the scheduling or the core behavior for specific games. Uh, to offer some performance uplifts. Now, one of the big issues with this that I've seen is apparently, you know, compatibility-wise with certain motherboards and the task of getting it up and running uh, means that this is really not going to be that usable in its current state for everyone who has a 14th gen CPU. So I would see why you would maybe leave it out of a lot of um, uh, the, the main reviews. But uh, Intel does claim some, some big performance bumps uh, are possible using this. Uh, Basically, they're saying, we now understand that some threads are in high demand at one point, but not so high demand at another. You don't want to tax the CPU with that because it could impact power and so forth. So the next iteration is this. What APO does is we test the game and see, okay, this might benefit from a fine tuning of the policy just because of the unique way the game behaves. Uh, and uh, we do now see some independent testing showing uh, some performance gains uh, you know, when, when you do enable this feature, although again, uh, enabling the feature itself can be, uh, like I said, uh, not it's not like you just in, use a 14th gen chip and this just automatically works, uh, which would be the better way to see this, <laughs> uh, something like this in, in my opinion, but it is cool um, and, and possibly worth taking a look at if you are already buying a 14th gen chip. Now let's talk about some driver updates. So AMD has a new GPU driver uh, adding Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 support among others, uh, but they're also claiming AI speed ups for certain GPUs and uh, APUs in certain programs. Uh, it's looking like uh, uh, this could include apps such as Stable uh, Diffusion, Adobe Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, UL Procyon AI, uh, things like that. This would be for uh, 7,000 GPUs and up where we could be seeing some of those benefits. I think this driver is also coming with uh, a Radeon Boost feature for Alan Wake 2. Uh, Radeon Boost is where uh, on quick camera pans, it actually lowers the render resolution of the game. It's like dynamic resolution scaling on quick movement, where perhaps the motion blur of the movement itself makes the lower pixel count less noticeable. It's an interesting feature. I've never found it particularly useful when gaming myself, but they are, uh, looks like adding support for that in Alan Wake 2. And again, some more uh, game support on the list. Now, also interestingly, in a separate driver update, uh, so not part of that main branch, AMD is releasing finally a new graphics driver for Polaris and Vega architecture GPUs, which according to this videocards.com article is the first in two months. By the way, all of my sources will be in the video description as usual if I haven't already mentioned that. So Polaris and Vega are not forgotten, um, but um, uh, it does seem like the driver updates for them have been slowing down a bit and not necessarily part of the main unified driver branch at this point in time. Now, in NVIDIA GPU uh, driver news, uh, they did release a hotfix driver addressing some Alan Wake 2 and Windows 10 bugs. It looks like specifically they're saying that there was gradual stability and performance degradation over extended periods of gameplay in Alan Wake 2, and this hotfix should address that, and some Windows 10 transparency issues and, and such in that uh, hotfix. Also, in a recent driver update, NVIDIA introduced a system memory fallback feature for stable diffusion. Uh, now, I was trying to figure out exactly what this does. 
uh, because I was seeing some people talking about it as if this was opening up system memory for use in stable diffusion, but reading this article on the topic, it seems like it might be actually shifting other things out of video memory so that to system memory so that your CUDA workload um, could use the full GPU memory that you had available. It, it's unclear to me exactly what this is doing, but this feature is available in the uh, NVIDIA uh, control panel for you to take a closer look at yourself. And again, articles on the topic will be linked in, uh, in the video description. Now we're seeing news that Western Digital uh, is splitting into two companies, one focused on hard disk drives and the other one focused on flash memory. This is interesting because uh, for a long time now, you could get you know Western Digital hard drives and SSDs. Um, it's looking like that uh, you know split could happen and then would the uh, Western Digital branding just be used on the hard disk drives? And then, um, you know, solid state drives get some kind of new branding. It's, it's I don't know, I'm, I'm curious uh, why exactly they're gonna make that split, but it looks like they are, and probably some kind of finance or investor stuff in the, behind the scenes uh, explains it. But let's go ahead and move on to some other PC game update news. We're seeing Baldur's Gate 3 Patch 4 includes tons of changes, including FSR 2.2. Previously, when the game launched, it only had FSR 1 support, which is just a spatial upscaler, and I'll be honest, when I tried it out, it could look pretty bad, because you're so far out from your character models, they're so small, like the, fa the features, details, and things like that uh, uh, did look pretty blurry when used. Uh, in my opinion, so it's nice to see an FSR 2.2 update. I'm curious to test the game out on my Steam Deck and see if that, um, uh, if that makes it uh, a little more usable on the Steam Deck in more demanding areas, but I haven't had a chance to play around with it there myself yet. Uh, in other FSR-related news, we're seeing FSR technology reportedly coming to next-gen Samsung and Qualcomm smartphones. Uh, so there is some kind of partnership here being announced uh, where we're seeing uh, AMD, Samsung, and Qualcomm have decidedly decided jointly uh, to, to, sorry, decided to jointly develop uh, FSR in order to compete with NVIDIA's DLSS, and it is anticipated that FSR technology will be implemented in Samsung's Galaxy uh, alongside ray tracing in the future. Um, now, I'm assuming this is just bringing FSR in its current form to these uh, to these platforms as opposed to jointly developing a newer version that better competes with DLSS, which would be more of what I would like to see uh, is is actually just updating FSR to be a better, uh, 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 you know, upscaler, especially at lower resolutions and uh, lower internal resolutions. That would be cool. Uh, we're seeing another UE5 game incoming with EA Sports WRC. Um, however, while it's apparently on UE5, there is no use of Lumen or Nanite and no plans to implement them in the future. And there's no DLSS3 or FSR3 at launch, but maybe could look at adding that in the future. Um, we're seeing Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, in, in other, I, I meant to put this after the other Baldur's Gate news, whatever. Anyway, uh, in other Baldur's Gate 3 news, we are seeing a uh, playtesting stage on the Xbox. So a 2023 release on Xbox could still be in the cards if all of that testing goes smoothly and quickly enough. Uh, in other PC gaming news, we're seeing that an ex-World of Warcraft designer founds a new NetEase studio making a AAA fantasy MMO codenamed Ghost. Uh, and also in PC gaming news, we're seeing Naughty God, Na Naughty, Naughty Dogs Jack 2 available on PC. Now, at first I thought this was some kind of official uh, port, but it looks like this is an unofficial port um, being done by the uh, team behind Open Goal, Open G-O-A-L, and does require a copy of the original release in order to run. This is part of an ongoing project that attempts to mimic the original goal language to deliver native and as accurate as possible ports featuring the same identical gameplay and such. Anyway, kind of neat uh, note if you're a fan of Jack 2. And uh, last thing I'll talk about is some monitor stuff. So MSI is talking a bit about their upcoming QD OLED gaming monitor lineup. 
Now, uh, if you've followed my channel for a while, you know I am a very big fan of gaming on OLEDs. Now, um, currently I have the uh, Alienware um, uh, Ultra Wide 1440p OLED that I'm using uh, right now as I film this video, and I also have a 4K LG C1 OLED that I also uh, make use of over there, and I am interested in upgrading the 4K screen because it's only 120 hertz, which is good, but I, it would be nice to have higher frame rate support, but also the 48 inch size on the LG C1 is quite a bit uh, for a desk space. So I'm particularly interested in the uh, 4K 240 hertz uh, monitors at a 32 inch screen size. If these get good reviews, this could potentially be kind of my end game monitor support. A 4K 32 inch 240 hertz uh, OLED screen is pretty much everything I'm looking for in a, in, in a 4K gaming monitor. Uh, if they do end up delivering on, uh, you know, uh, on actual reviews when they come out there. We're also going to be seeing uh, some 1440p monitors at 360 hertz QD OLED. Uh, so that'll be pretty cool as well. And those will be at 27 inch sizes. So uh, is OLED, uh, like it seems like OLED is, this could be the year um, next year where, where OLED pretty much has every kind of resolution and size that you would really be, and refresh rate that you would be looking for. So awesome stuff there. That's what I've got you guys uh, for you guys today in the gaming PC hardware and software news space. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.